Greetings, my comrades, and welcome back to Zonolith. And welcome back to another brand new episode in the What If I Wrote Pokemon the Series Black and White series. Now, I'm really sorry to say this, but sadly, this is the second to last episode of the series. I just want to say thank you before we go any further. Uh, I started this series as something just for fun. I've never seen someone do a rewrite of a Pokemon anime series on YouTube before, and the result was incredible. All the support, all the love, it's just been so surreal, and it's it's been amazing. I can't even put it into words of how grateful I am for all this. And I hope you guys continue to support me going into the future. I have a lot of stuff planned for the channel, and I want to make this a place where people can come here and have a really good time and talk about Pokemon. I want to make this channel something special, so please consider supporting me even after the series has concluded. Anyway, I don't want to waste any more of your time, let's jump right into the second part of Episode Kira. Our group now stops in the small town of Flockacy, where they run into none other than Alder, which makes Alexa quite shocked, learning that the group is friends with the Unova champion. Ash asks if Iris has come to challenge Alder yet, to which Alder states she hasn't and is still training for their battle. After explaining their situation, Ashton tells Alder they are heading to Verbank City to head off to Opelucid to speak with Drayden, to learn anything about this third dragon Cedric told them about. Alder wishes them the best of luck, but before they can leave, a loud scream is heard and a young man approaches the group. He looks straight into Ash's eyes and demands a battle. Alder then chuckles and introduces the man as his grandson, Benga. Benga states that as soon as he saw Ash in the league, he knew he had to battle him. After all, the future champion of Unova should strive to fight as many strong opponents as possible. Ash accepts the challenge and the two-on-two -two battle is on, and Ash tells Benga he won't hold back. Benga starts off the battle with his Gabite, and Ash sends out Servine. The battle is a fierce one. Benga and Gabite are newbies like Hugh and Oshawott. You can tell they've been training for a pretty long time, however, they cannot possibly match the skill of Ash and Servine. Next up, Benga sends in Larvesta, who was able to take down the weakened Servine after putting up a reasonable amount of effort. Ash has enough playing around and sends in Charizard. Alder and Banga are both impressed with Ash's newest team edition. Technically old edition, but they've never met Charizard before, so just go along with it. Just, just go along with it, please. Just, please, just go along with it. Anyway, Charizard makes quick work of Larvesta, not even taking a sweat. Banga is shocked by the immense power of Charizard, and so is Alder. Banga then comes up to Ash and tells him that although he lost, he will continue the train and make it to the top like it is destined to be. Ash tells him to continue with that dream, and it will come true one day, at least, that's the philosophy he lives with. Benga tells him he will keep on believing and that one day he will become the champion. Alexa then compliments Ash's battling skills, saying that he is super strong. Ash thanks her as they continue to Verbank City. Our group then reaches Verbank City once again and is about to head out to Opelousin, when the group once again runs into Hugh, who reveals to have beaten Sharon and earned his first gym badge. It's then revealed that Hugh will be taking on the gym leader here in Verbank City, and begs Ash to come and watch him, because he wants to show him just how much stronger he has become. Ash sees no reason not to, and the group decides to watch Hugh face off against the Verbank City gym leader. They are then introduced to the Verbank City gym leader, Roxy, a punk star, rock superstar, and a famous musician. Their band has traveled all around the world and brought many smiles to people and Pokemon alike. After seeing the resolve in Hugh's eyes, Roxy agrees to battle him in a 2 on 2 Pokemon battle. Roxy starts off with her coughing, and Hugh brings out his newest edition, Riolu. 
Ryolu and Coffin go at each other over and over again, with neither Pokemon giving in. However, Hugh is still a novice, so Coffin is able to get the upper hand against Riolu. Hugh then sends in Oshawott. Oshawott and Hugh have certainly grown since the last time we saw them in Aspersia City, and take down Roxy's Coffin. Roxy then sends in her ace Pokemon, Whirlipede. Whirlipede uses its speed to knock Oshawott back and forth, and the group is starting to worry about Hugh. However, Hugh still has a confident smile and turns to Ash, telling him to watch this. This is his battling style. Oshawott and Hugh then go super aggressive and use brute force to stop Whirlipede in their tracks. Oshawott and Hugh have found their battling style, and this in turn is what allows Oshawott to take down Roxy's Whirlipede. Roxy then gives Hugh the Toxic Badge, and Hugh is absolutely thrilled. Ash comes over and fist bumps Hugh, telling him he's gotten so strong. Hugh thanks him and states he's now gonna head over to Castilia. Now that he has found his battling style, he states he's now ready to officially start his Pokemon journey. The group then says farewell to Hugh for good as he sets off for Castilia. The next up on the list is Opelucid. Time to learn even more about this third Unova Dragon. Our group arrives once again in Opelucid City, home to the Dragon Master Drayden, who hopefully knows something about the third dragon Cedric alluded to. After receiving the information they need, the group plans to meet Cedric in Lakanosa Town to investigate this dragon Pokemon further. Drayden welcomes the trio back with open arms, especially Ash. Drayden tells him he is very proud of him, as he was the first one in generations to pull out the full power of Zekrom. Because of him, the people in Pokemon of Unova have a future together, and it's all because of Ash. Ashton asks if Iris is here, to which Drayden responds, no. Iris is actually taking on the Elite Four today, as the group speaks to him, and will potentially be crowned the Unova League champion if she succeeds. The group cheers Iris on in spirit as she enters the League, but back on the matter of hand. The group explains their situation about the third dragon, about the meetup with Cedric in Lakanosa Town, and about the return of Team Plasma, and whether or not their return has a connection to this third dragon Pokemon. Drayden digests this information for a second, and then tells the group to follow him upstairs. It is here where Drayden pulls out an ancient stone tablet from his drawer. It depicts three dragon Pokemon. Two of them are easily made out to be Reshiram and Zekrom, but the third one is unfamiliar to the group. Drayden tells them that he comes from a long line of dragon masters. In fact, he is the ancestor of the ancient Univans, who are one with the dragon Pokemon. That this sacred legend has been kept secret by his family for generations. Drayden once again explains the tale of Unova, about how Reshiram and Zekrom used to be a single Pokemon, but due to a war between the Princes of Truth and Ideals, the Pokemon split into two, leading to a great battle, which caused the creation of the Light and Darkstone. However, unknown to most is that the Dragon Pokemon actually survived. Although Reshiram and Zekrom split off from the Dragon, a shell of what once was remained. The group is shocked by this revelation. The group then asks Drayden if he knows its name, which he reveals to be Kiram, the Pokemon with a heart as cold as ice and the one who has the power to freeze all of Unova. Ashton concludes that Kiram must be what Team Plasma's after. They must hope to unleash Kiram's power and freeze all of Unova, forcing both people and Pokemon under their control. Drayden then states that if what Ash is saying is true, they will need a specific device. Drayden pulls out a relic, which he explains to be as old as the Dragon Spiral Tower and the Age of Truths and Ideals. It's a relic that has been passed down by his family, known as the DNA Splicers. Drayden doesn't know what precisely this relic is capable of, besides that it holds the potential to make Kiram stronger than it is now. If Team Plasma truly wishes to reawaken the destructive power once owned by the original dragon, they will need the DNA Splicers. The entire house then shakes, and the group runs outside to see none other than a frozen Opelucid city and a pirate ship in the sky. Neo Team Plasma grunts then drops to the surface and starts to surround the group and Drayden. This group is led by one of the Seven Sages, Zinzolin, who reveals to the heroes that Ash's speculation was indeed correct. Neo Team Plasma plans to use Kiram's true power to take over all of Unova and already has the Pokemon in their possession. Team Plasma's goal is to finish off where Getsis left off. Drayden then asks how they even know about the existence of Kiram, which Zinzolin laughs at telling Drayden his family isn't the only one that has passed on stories of Kiram. Getsis is also an ancestor from those who lived in the era of truths and ideals, and also knows just as much as Drayden. This shocks Drayden as he didn't think anyone else besides him knew about the secrets of Kiram. Ashen yells at Team Plasma, telling Zinzlin that they lost, so what makes this time different? Zinzlin laughs, telling Ash this time they don't need to have a facade to manipulate someone like N, and now all they need to use is brute force. 
Zinzalin orders the group to seize them, and Ash and the others hold off the grunts, telling Drayden to run off with the DNA splicers. Drayden runs to Opelucid City, while Ash and the others take on the Neoplasma grunts. Eventually, Drayden is stopped by Zinzalin, who sends out his Weavile and Cryogonal. Drayden sends out his Haxorus, which makes Zinzalin believe Drayden has lost all hope. There is no way his dragon can take out both of his Ice-type Pokémon. That's when Drayden tells him he's wrong. His determination and will to win has never let him down, and I doubt it will let him fail now. Drayden enters a battle against Zinzalin's Pokémon, and to Zinzalin's surprise, Haxorus is on equal ground. It's not because of strategy, it's solely brute force. Eventually though, Drayden and Haxorus start tiring out and lose the upper hand. Drayden collapses because of the freezing cold, and Zinzalin laughs as he searches for the DNA splicers. Only to find nothing. Zinzalin is absolutely furious and demands Drayden to tell him where the DNA splicers are. Drayden chuckles, telling him the kid is probably long gone by now. That's right, Ash expected an attack from Team Plasma, and he and Drayden pretended that Drayden was the one with the splicers, when in reality, Ash had it the entire time. We then go back to Ash and the group who are on the outskirts of Opelousan City. The group asks Ash why they aren't going back to help Drayden when he has the DNA splicers. Ash smirks as he pulls out the DNA splicers from his bag. The group is shocked and Ashton explains the plan he and Drayden made. The group is relieved because Team Plasma's goal can't come to fruition as long as they have the DNA splicers. All of a sudden, the splicers disappear from Ash's hands and it's revealed that Team Plasma's Shadow Triad has snatched them. Ash asks the group who they are and they say they are nothing more than shadows watching for the perfect time to strike. Before Ash can battle them, the group of three disappear, before telling Ash that Lord N was a fool, a pacifist of sorts that only brought down Team Plasma's power. Now Team Plasma can finally reach its true potential, and they will accomplish it all with brute force. The Plasma ship then leaves, setting a course for Lacanosa. Ash and the others decide to follow it, getting ready for their final confrontation with Plasma once and for all. We then enter Colrus's lab once again, who is admiring Kiram who is locked up in a cage, saying things such as so powerful and magnificent to the Pokemon. The Shadow Triad then arrive and hands Colrus the DNA splicers. Colrus laughs maniacally, finally, he will be able to see the true potential of Pokemon. Colrus then asks the Triad if they genuinely think their king will show up, and the trio nods, saying this is something he can't avoid. The scene ends with the Plasma for Great over a forest, heading towards Lakanosa Town once again. However, a particular person is also following the ship, and they so happen to have Reshiram by their side. Well everyone, that's it for part 13. Next time we reach the end of this rewrite. I'm sad it's the ending, but it's been a fun ride, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't worry, soon after the finale releases, I will be announcing my next rewrite, so stay tuned! Anyways, if you guys did enjoy this episode, please remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, turn on all notifications to never miss an upload, and to share these videos with people and friends so they can come here and join me for my journey. Also, please follow me on my Twitter to see more of me. That being said, my name is Zonalith, and I'll catch you guys next time!